I remember some of the first questions I would ask my teachers back in the days when I looked at the night skies and saw darkness. And obviously, many of us do have the same questions. Why is the night skies black? Why do we have so much darkness out there and so few stars in between? Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about some of the new discoveries in regards to a concept known as extragalactic background light, EBL for short. The light that's present if you were to remove pretty much all of the galaxies and all of the stars, the light that technically represents that darkness I wanted to know more about. And interestingly enough, the recent findings from one of the teams suggest something we didn't really understand about the light. When studying this light using some of the new observations, the scientists discovered that everything seems to be just a little bit brighter than we expected. As a matter of fact, at least twice as bright as the theoretical predictions based on the number of galaxies we know of in the universe. And at the moment, it's somewhat difficult to explain. But let's talk about these concepts in a little bit more detail because it does actually involve several ideas that are often misinterpreted or often misunderstood. So first of all, we have what's known as DEBRA, Diffuse Extragalactic Background Radiation with the brightest member of DEBRA being so-called Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB. But this is obviously only visible in the microwave frequency, and doesn't represent other background radiation that can be detected in other frequencies as well. And so in theory, if you were to look at the night skies with some kind of a very powerful telescope, and to then start removing pretty much everything we see here, so basically removing all of the bright stars, removing all of the galaxies that might be also extremely bright as well, and possibly all of the other sources of light known to us, you're going to be left with EBL, extragalactic background light. Light produced by a lot of other things we still don't really understand, but for the most part, believed to be produced by various extremely distant and relatively powerful galaxies. Specifically, a lot of really early galaxies existing in the beginning of the universe, with many of them producing a lot of stars extremely quickly, so-called starburst galaxies, and also galaxies producing very powerful jets such as quasars and blazers. But the thing is, seeing this from planet Earth is extremely difficult. And it's difficult for several reasons. And one of these reasons is sort of visible in this video right here. There is actually quite a lot of glow in the night skies produced by various dust in the solar system but also in our own galaxy. With some of the brightest glow mostly being from the so-called zodiacal light. The light you see produced right here that's actually hundreds of times brighter than the background light we're trying to detect. Now this right here has a very interesting origin and there is a video about this from a relatively recent study that suggests that the zodiacal light is actually maybe produced by the dust from Mars. You can check out this video somewhere right there or in the description below. With the other type of light, such as galactic light, which is usually produced by dust located in the galaxy itself, also preventing us from seeing certain regions. But this type of light we can avoid by, I guess, looking in the opposite direction. But how do you avoid the zodiacal light that's produced by possibly Mars? Well, in this case, if we were to somehow find a way to look at the night skies really, really far away from planet Earth, from planet Mars, or somewhere on the outskirts of the solar system, we might be able to see this extragalactic light we're trying to see. So naturally, here the scientists decided to use the iconic New Horizons mission. The iconic probe that visited Pluto back in 2015 took some incredible photos of Pluto and discovered quite a lot of things about it, and that's currently on the way out of the solar system and is going to be moving into the darker areas. And so in this case, by using the New Horizons probe and by looking in the regions of space where there is not much going on, so basically by looking at complete darkness, it might become possible to first of all calculate the total amount of this EBL but to also possibly see something we've never seen before. And one such discovery was already made by the probe a few years ago. You can find the video for this in the description below as well. But in this case, by just looking at the optical light of EBL, the so-called cosmic optical background, the scientists realized that, well, it seems to be at least twice as bright. Suggesting, of course, several different things. Now, one of the more obvious explanations here is maybe in regards to this just being an error. So, for example, maybe the New Horizons probe is actually producing it itself. Specifically, maybe the instrument used here, known as LORI, may be somehow producing additional foreground light. And even though it was suggested previously that the nuclear power source present in the probe could maybe somehow be responsible for the light produced here, 
In this study, the scientists have already taken it into consideration, so they don't think it's coming from the probe itself. But if not the instrument, and if not an error, what could it be? Well, just like the previous explanation from a few years ago, in theory, this could be a representation of a lot of different galaxies we just didn't know existed. There could be a large population of relatively difficult to see galaxies that could be just below the detection limit for other telescopes. If this is so, there's at least one telescope that's going to be able to resolve this issue. James Webb Telescope, in theory, should be able to find these ancient distant galaxies. The other explanation involves potential existence of tremendous numbers of so-called rogue stars. Stars stuck between galaxies in the intergalactic space that might have gotten kicked out by various galactic collisions and whose numbers we might have underestimated. Once again, potentially a job for James Webb Telescope to resolve with some other more exotic explanations involving things like Cherenkov radiation from gamma rays, the type of radiation we usually see in, for example, a typical nuclear power plant, or maybe different types of light reflected from the galactic dust present in the Milky Way. In other words, currently nobody really knows what's going on here, but the results seem to be confirmed from previous studies. In other words, there seem to be a little bit more light than we expect from the background light of the universe. The universe seems to be just a little bit brighter than we expected. Or to answer my own question from early childhood, the universe doesn't seem to be dark after all. But unfortunately, it will probably take us a few years to answer these questions. It will take a lot of observations from James Webb Telescope, and it will also take projects like this one known as Sphere X, or this one known as Cyber and Cyber 2, to help us answer these questions and to actually help us determine the exact values for all of this cosmic microwave radiation and extragalactic background light. And so, at least for now, this has to stay as a mystery. The universe is brighter for reasons we cannot explain. But whatever the answer is, it's probably going to be really exciting. So make sure to subscribe because we're definitely coming back and talking about this in some of the future videos. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.